Miami had the last word in 2014, didn't matter. Chicago had the last word in 2010, didn't matter. The reality of the situation is, is that I don't think it matters that much, and I'll tell you why. If you're the Toronto Raptors and you need the last word after you just won a championship with this dude and having him in your possession for a year, the fact that you need a meeting in order to convince him tells me that, excuse me, it ain't enough. Because if I spend a year in a city and I'm the man and I win a championship and you can give me $50 million more than anybody else can. And, I, and, and by the way, keep in mind, he was in San Antonio. He gave up the potential of a Supermax deal at 221. He sacrificed $30 million. He goes to Toronto. Now you can make about 189.7. Now you're making another move that would sacrifice and drop that down to 141. So that is an additional close to $50 million, which means that the potential is there for him to lose $80 million compared to what he could have gotten in San Antonio if he were to make yet another move by not staying in Toronto and going somewhere else. And you still need to convince him? After winning a championship, after having him for the year, after him being a finals MVP, a superstar, the franchise is clearly his, the country is his, not just the city, and you got $50 million more than anybody else to give him, and he, you still need a final yes. meeting? Yes. That is ahead, not a Jay, good sign. I, I want that to is not a good sign. Yes. First off, Kawhi is the biggest enigma in all of basketball. In all basketball, because nobody knows what he wants to That's do. True. He, say he goes against the grain all the time because he's Kawhi. And I say to build on your point a little bit, the thing that kind of worries me for Toronto, because that's where ultimately I think he should be in Toronto. And you can factor in the taxes are significantly less if you're considered to be a resident of Canada. If you spend over 138 days there, don't worry, I've dug in and did the minutia on the amount of money he can make by staying there more so than going to other places. But Masai Ujiri said something the other day when he was talking about Kawhi Leonard. He said, ultimately, I have respect for Kawhi Leonard, and we've done everything we needed to do to make it the best possible case scenario for him. They incorporated his own medical team. Kawhi Leonard's own medical team was incorporated into what Toronto did in order to help him load management and get to him to where he needed to be to win a championship. So I, I get worried, S.A., because I think you are right to a certain degree. I think you're right. The fact that they put on the white gloves and they made this scenario picture perfect for you. Low management, took time off, your own medical team. What do you need, Kawhi? Nobody's pressuring you to stay. We love you. We respect you. We just want to ride with you. And now we need a meeting to tell you all that stuff again. It may, no. it, the decision may already be made up on Kawhi that he's going to stay there. I can say you that are. too. But it is a little bit worrisome if you are Toronto that you feel you need to put together a pitch deck for him and really sell him on all the things that he saw You guys for are arguing year. different things. The question is, is it a big deal that you get last word? The answer is yes. Now, it doesn't change the following things. The Pacific Ocean is not in Toronto, right? It's just not there. You don't have 300 days of sunshine at 75 degrees a year. It's not there. Your sneaker company doesn't want you there. It wants you in L.A. And finally, it's not home. L.A.'s home. So all those things exist. Those are structural issues Toronto cannot address. Also, you have just as good a chance to win a chip with the Clippers as you do with the Raptors, right? Those things are true. There's nothing Masai Ujiri or anyone could do about it that doesn't change the fact that having last word is powerful. If his decision's made up, it doesn't matter already, right? Okay, no one knows. But let's assume it's not. I mean, that's the point of this conversation. We assume he has not 100% decided. Then the last word from the team that just did all those things you said, and it's Masai Ujiri doing the talking, that is a big deal to me. Well, Max, can I, can I flip it on you hypothetically? Well, Couldn't I say... Okay, well, the last word, even though they're, they're going to get last word, doesn't, I already know where it is. Maybe I just want to see what everybody else is going to do. I already know where it is. I already know what my decision That's is. That's exactly where I was right. going. That's exactly it's where I was made, going, James, because my whole point is this. Max, hold on, hold on, hold on, Max. Hold on, Max. Kawhi Leonard may be doing an anti-LeBron in this regard. I'm not going to pull a, Dan, a, a LeBron with Dan Gilbert in 2010 when the man clicked on the TV and found out I was leaving on national yep. television like everybody else. I'm going to show Masai 
this brother and this crew of dudes he has respect. working for him who have been nothing but respectful to me by showing them the courtesy and respect of granting them a last interview and looking them in the face and telling them what I'm going to do rather than them finding out by some other means. It could just be that. Yeah, well, listen, if his mind is made up, then, of course, there's no big deal. He's going to do what he's going to do. And the odds of changing his mind are much lower than if he still has an open mind. I'm assuming that he hasn't made a choice. If this is all just a, a dog and pony show, you know, who cares? I'm assuming he hasn't made his choice. And here's even a different point. If you're Toronto, what position does that put you in? Like, how big of a deck do we need to build out for you, for Kawhi? Like, what else do we need to show you that we need to present to you in this last hour meeting that we're going to have to prove to you that we've done everything to keep you here? I, mean, I don't really know what else you can do. What else can you show? Got to do that, like, Matthew McConaughey speech from A Time to Kill at the end. It's like, like you got to pull a rabbit out the hat. <laughs> it is something different. I don't know. roll yeah. out the red carpet if you want, Kawhi. These are all very good points. However, if Kawhi does indeed change teams, he would become only the second player to ever leave his team after winning finals MVP. Michael Jordan, of course, being the first. If he goes to the Clippers, he has a chance to be the best Third player year. in franchise history on two teams. Toronto, he would be the best player ever to play. And then the Clippers How about the first man to have finals MVP thing, on three different teams? Guys, guys, the other thing, the other thing that I keep hearing is that you talk about branding, you talk about cachet, you talk about all things. What I've consistently heard about Kawhi Leonard all year long is that he is truly old school. He's cut from a different cloth than today's generation. You can use the word enigma. You can use anything. He don't care about any of that. Now, he don't even care about this notion of having to share the wealth with A.D. and LeBron and all of this other stuff. Kawhi departed from San Antonio because he wants to be happy. So the, he knows he's going to be happy in L.A. The question is, does he know whether or not he's going to be happy in Toronto? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.